Okay, so our next session is on the robot game and mission strategy. So with only with 14 missions in only two and a half minutes, how do you help guide your team in choosing which missions to attempt? So this session is presented by Joe Burnell, the first senior mentor for the North Texas region. Um, and he, where he works with all three of the first programs. So Joe has been with FIRST for about 11 years and working with FLL for 10. And while working with FLL, he's been a team coach, a mentor, a ref, our regional head ref here in North Texas. Um, and then other than FIRST, he has a BS in, uh, uh, in math and his day job is an engineer at Lockheed Martin, which takes up too much of his time because I need more of his help. <laughs> so thanks, Joe. <laughs> Take it away. All right, well, I'm going to be talking a little bit about mission strategy. If you've been doing this a long time, you've probably heard some of this. If you haven't been around, then I'm hoping to help. And all I'm going to be talking about the different levels of hardness and things like that. I'm going to try and share my screen real quick. Here we go. So can you all see that? Hello? Yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, so, hmm, okay, need to, there we go. All right, so all uh, missions, you kind of divide up into hard missions and easy missions. And um, actually all the easy missions, and I'll tell you when they're hard and easy, all the easy missions can be done with just the default education EV3 and the default um, uh, spike prime. The EV3, though, I did add an extra light sensor, and I'll go into that later. Uh, and so let's talk about some general strategies first. Uh, missions that are further away uh, with small targets are harder. And so really the whole uh, east end of the board, I'm not going to talk a lot about. But uh, however, if you use lines and walls, you can, that can help get you aimed up close to, uh, and make it seem closer. So this year there's lots of lines, I'll talk about that. Uh, attachments can help too. Uh, you can use a big attachment with a small target and it makes it uh, easier to score. Um, typically you start out just sol solving individual missions, then you start figuring out how to combine them. And one of the biggest things is the more time you're in base changing out attachments, the less time you're scoring. So make your robots easy to switch out. If you're rebuilding parts of your attachments, it's probably not good. You need to have some way to slip them on and slip them off. Um, test your missions. If you're successful with your attachments and all, four out of five tries, that's good. If you're successful five out of five tries, you got it. That's, good. that's really good. Uh, if it's less, try and rebuild or redesign your attachment or reprogram and just get at least a four out of five tries a successful mission. Um, everything I talk about today, uh, this is just one simple way of doing things. It's not the way, it's not the best way, it's not the worst way. Have, your, have the kids, uh, some coaches, some kids are on here, I'm not sure, but the coaches, have your kids come up with their own ways. Um, here's, these are kind of to suggest to get things started. However, the best strategy overall, read the robot game rules. Um, and every time you do a mission, read that rule out, that mission rules out loud so that everybody kind of knows that you're doing the right thing. All right, so lines, use them. You can see there's lines all over the board. And that's why two light sensors are kind of better than one. Uh, because you follow lines. And in some places, like on the picture on the left, you're just fine following the line with your right hand, with your robot's right hand light sensor. But then you get around to where the slide is, and all of a sudden the right hand light sensor is you're running into the slide. So Two light sensors are better than one. If not, then you're going to have to do some adjustment on how you program and plan your missions. Uh, but there's lines there. Use them. They help. All right. The best, again, 
one of the best strategies. Easy 60 points, don't touch your robot. Design, plan, and make your robot to where you don't have to, you're not, it's not gonna get stuck. Uh, practice, if you see it getting stuck in a certain place a lot, then redo the program, readjust your attachment to robot. And so you, cause that's an easy 60 points. And actually that's probably the most, I mean, points get taken away from there a lot. All right, so this is an easy one. If you can fit your robot into the small inspection area, 25 points, do it. You got 25 points there. It's not much of a strategy, but eh. All right, so some of the strategies. This is an easy mission. M1 and M14, you kind of do the same thing to push your innovation project and your health um, health units out, just push them out of base and to where they're touching the gray or the replay um, logo. And the, the gray loop is part of the, uh, mission and so that if that's over the line do it uh, that's fine you should do this one later in the in your set of missions because like in the picture on the right the the health unit is across the line and if your robot goes out that line later on or goes that direction later on it's going to run over it and it might take it off a track so you should probably do this one later in the um, in all of the missions closer to the end of the two and a half minutes uh, the step counter, it's easy, but not easy. You can get there easily. There's this nice wall there, but have your kids play with it. I found as, when I solved this mission, you can't just push on that thing or maybe one out of five times you can just push and it works. You kind of have to finesse it and think about, you know, going forward, then backing off a little bit, then going forward, then backing off. And that, because this, it seems simple enough just to push it, but it's not that simple. Um, if you find a certain speed that your robot can go and it just goes straight in, go for that. But I haven't found that yet. I played with that one quite a while. All right, um, the slide. All right, well, there's a little man that starts out on top and uh, so it, it's easy enough just to bump into the, the slide part and the, the man can, comes down. It, I got it four out of five times when I was playing with it. If you can catch it in a loop or like in the picture on the um, part of the robot, you can um, just drag it back, drag the little man back at, uh, to base. And so you have your man on base. That's the man on the top. A lot harder is that um, the second man, it's not out of the picture. It's a hard mission because you have to lift the man up and then over. Um, it's close, but still it, it's gonna be a little bit more effort to do something to lift the man up and over. And it's a small target. So I can't wait to see what kids do to come up to solve that one because I always love seeing kids solutions for all these. Um, Oh, the Lego person on the tire. This is one of them where you should read the, make sure you read the rules because it doesn't say that the tire has to be out where the tires are. However, if you can bring it back and put your little man on it. However, you can no longer score the uh, tire on mission M9, mission nine, because it's come across the red line. So, you can weigh the points, how many points for uh, the person on the tire versus how much, many points for flipping the tire over. Or if you can put it on there while it's out there, while the tire is out there, that's even better. But, oh, I'm sorry. One other strategy for qualifiers, do your best to get the easy missions and some of the medium missions for, uh, and, don't necessarily worry about the hard missions. As you progress toward the uh, uh, regional championships, then you start worrying more about those other missions. Uh, not everybody's gonna score all the missions in, at qualifiers, or very, 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 very few people will. Um, 
So just remember, you don't have to score all of them. S score what you can and plan to do more. But if you can figure out easy ways to do any of these missions, especially the hard ones, go for it. Uh, the park bench, it's close, so it's easy. Uh, the bench standing up to the flat, that's an easy mission. It just flops over. You can run into it with your robot. Getting the um, the backrest out, I found, I, I kind of tore this thing up several times just by trying to drive over it. And my robot got all cattywampus and out of not going straight after it drove over it. And so then I would have, if I was coming back to base, I would have to figure out how to get there. So it's not quite as easy as just mowing over the backrest. You have to pick it up or something like that. But if you put the uh, lifters on the spike or the EV3, that, that should work just fine. Okay, the cubes and the squares. An update came out the 19th and it says that um, you get 10 points per square. So four cubes is good enough. Just one cube in each square. And it's kind of medium because you can't just push them out there. You have to uh, get them up across the Legos and into the holes. And if you're scoring this one, you want to, um, actually it's better to score this one. You, you get 10 points per cube in a, in a hop, hopscotch square. And later on, we'll talk about getting them into the frame and it's only five points per cube in the frame. So this one would be better if you can get it done. You might think about some kind of dumper where you lift them up, they're up off the floor and then as you get close, you can dump them. So think about something like that. All right, under the bar, easy. You can follow the line. You don't have to follow the line, but it's easier if you do. But again, you have to make sure your, your robot is following the line to where it goes under the bar and not into the upright. The dance off. This will be fun because actually in, in the past, kids have always had their robots get out there and dance occasionally. It's always fun. But you have to remember that the controller needs to be over the dance floor. Uh, that's what it says in the rules. There's lots of lines to get out there, so it's not that hard. And this is a mission that you do at the end. There's also a pull, this is an easy mission. There's also a pull up mission that's hard and, but is worth more points. And so if you can do the pull up mission, do that. But and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, if you can do, if all you can do is this dance mission at the end, do it. Um, and really dance just means some kind of movement. And try and, please try and make it where on the videos you can, the refs can see that it is actually over the dance floor. Uh, I have a feeling that there's gonna be a lot of videos that you can't quite tell. There's benefit of the doubt, but we'd rather be sure. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, but Bosia, part one. I don't know. Uh, getting the getting the blocks in the frame. You have a bunch of blocks starting out in home by, at, in the home, and so if all you need is some kind of dumper, there's a rule that says you can't. Your robot cannot get into the inside the frame. Or wait equipment can't get into the frame and but you can take your robot up, or up and dump those cubes the tricky part is the yellow cube if you get one yellow cube into the target area where you can see that there's a yellow cube in that smaller area that's the target area that you get an extra 10 points or something like that uh, I found that it's not always easy uh, to do that. However, on the left hand side of that picture, there's the uh, slot, the slider. I forget what they call it in the missions, but there's a yellow cube on top of that. If you can get that aimed well, I mean, 
you can score every time with that. It's a little bit harder. Uh, however, think about using the base of that uh, slider mission uh, as, as a stop. So you pull up against the base and somehow turn your slider and it, if you get it turned right, it goes in every time. So just think about how you might can use that slider to score every time. Okay, those are kind of the easy missions. Those are the ones that most people are gonna score and uh, be able to do. Uh, they're the ones that you should be doing. Uh, however, if you wanna set yourself apart in the robot game, uh, then you need to do some of the medium and hard missions. And actually these are, for me as a ref, these are the most fun because I love to watch how kids solve this, solve the, the missions. Uh, so I can't wait to see what all y'all do. But you should, you should look at how many, when you're choosing which missions to run to get it into the two and a half minutes, look at the points scored for each. Say, if I do this one, it's 15 points. If I do that one, it's 20 points. And so that's how you can sometimes decide, but sometimes not as easy as that. It's sometimes it's 20 points and an extra 15 seconds or 10 points and a lot quicker. So you're gonna have trade-offs and you're gonna have to figure out how to deal with that. Good luck. Uh, attachments, oh, I said attachments can help you score. And you can, since most teams only have like one robot or the robot's only in one place, you can build attachments and just kind of hold them in your hand and kind of try them out. But come up with something and just try them early. Figure out what doesn't work if you have to. I mean, not every idea you have will work. If it doesn't work, honestly, you're just one step closer to finding something that does work. And it's not embarrassing if you if it doesn't work. It's just, I'm an engineer, I, I fail a lot, but it always leads me to the final goal. So just build, a uh, build an attachment, try it out on a mission. And if it seems to work, try it with your robot, hook it up, figure out how to hook it up to your robot and go from there. So, all right, um, the harder missions, medium and hard. All right, since we're doing everything remote this year, um, in the up, one of the first updates was if you get one cube, and it does say exactly one cube sent over the north wall uh, from your boat, whatever mis uh, shared mission model. Uh, and so it's one cube. This is kind of hard because they're so close. You can see the size of my, on the right hand side, you can see the size of my finger versus the size of the target. Me doing it with the finger is fairly easy just because I'm not a robot, luckily. Uh, but doing it with the, ro getting the robot to move out that far and still hit a target that small, uh, that's gonna be a challenge. Uh, so I would say, honestly, oh, and also this mission I found, if you bump into it too hard, the other block's going to go. And since in the rule it says exactly one cube, if two cubes go over, it doesn't count. Sorry. Uh, so this is, you can use the wall, something out in front of your robot at, to where it hits the wall and can't go any further so it doesn't bump into the mission. and then. If you can come up with a mechanism to dump a cube, that works. So that's when walls and lines come in uh, handy. Yeah. All right. Cube in the crate and lift the basket. Uh, there's two little white stoppers. I call uh, the the lower white stoppers really. I almost called that eat, getting the basket up to that easy. Because with the lifts on the spike and the EV3, the front lift, you can get it up to the lower uh, 
white stopper fairly easily. Getting it up to the high white stopper, that's where it comes in hard. And you're gonna have to come up with some either longer lifts, and then you have to worry about the lift missing, you know, the basket going halfway up and the lift coming off and then dropping back down. So uh, I wanna see how kids solve that too. And then getting that little cube into that slightly larger basket, that's not all that easy. Uh, but if you build some kind of funnel, think about a funnel to where it just kind of in a dumper where it just kind of, there's no way it can miss, you know, that kind of thought. But it's not that easy to, to do. All right, tires, you can turn them over. The blue tire, there's no restrictions about where it goes. Uh, the heavy black tire though, you have to turn it over and not cross that red, I forget what they call it, red tire line. If you're gonna score this one, if you're gonna use it on the slide person mission, just take it back to the base. Lift the robot, it's hard. Honestly, after I did this, I was thinking of several ways that it could be easier. You need some kind of mechanism. Uh, you could even use like a stretched rubber bands where it hits a trigger and the rubber bands lift up your robot if your robot's not too heavy or you, but this is gonna need some kind of mechanism. And it, if you do this one, make sure it lifts it high enough that the refs can see that it's off the off the mat. The cell phone, it's kind of far out there, but there's black lines just about all the way. You can flip it on the field, which is really kind of hard. We found out that with the manhole covers whenever we had the manhole covers. But if you take it back to base, you can just flip it and it says the um, it has to be on the mat. However, the launch area is part of home and is part of the mat. Think about it. Robot treadmill, that's, there's black lines all the way out there. It's easy to get to, but coming off, the robot kind of comes off cattywampus. And so it, it's not, you have to, once it comes off, you have to straighten yourself to be able to get going again. So I kind of called this hard, but medium hard but it's way out there, so it takes time to get there. Uh, the rowing machine with just the standard robot, you can, there's black lines to get there. If you can just dump some, have something go over the, the uh, wheel and back up, you can get it out of the circle. With a little more practice, get it into the small circle. And then the weight machine, this one's hard in the yellow spot. It's pretty hard. I use both my robots to try and get it all the way up, uh, the weights all the way up with it, with the, the setting in the yellow and neither of them had enough weight to push itself up or to push the weights up. But if you go to the magenta or the blue, then it gets a lot easier. There's enough um, uh, lever, lever arm weight to get it up. So that one's fairly easy. Well, no, it's hard, it's way, way the heck out there. Once you try the blue or the other one. And then questions, I'll type my email ask, uh, address into the uh, chat, but ask me anything, I'll give you an answer whenever I can. Thank my you, back. Jeff. Woo. You're back. Thank you. No, that was, that was really interesting. Um, and I liked your idea of your, your tip of like holding attachments in your hand. So like you could see what you can do, um, to really, um, uh, even practicing without the robot, practicing without the robot to like flip some Legos over things like that. Like with the cell phone, like what type of attachments you need. Right. Um, somebody asked if you could, uh, put a copy of your slides in the, um, uh, in the chat feature yeah. when you advance. Um, Mine will be out there later, yeah. Awesome, but thank you, that was that was great. Um, 
So any, any questions about this? Okay. So for the health units at the base, can we use our hands to load onto the robot or should the robot need no. to pick it up itself? Anything that starts off in home or the launch area, you can touch your robot, you can touch the equipment, uh, the missions. So load them on with your hands, get them, get them in just in the right spot. And then once it leaves the launch area, read the rules. Uh, once it leaves the launch area, then you can't touch it. But in the launch area and home, touch away. And then a note about the health units, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but you only use the green units on right. the field this year. So the right. other colors, the extra pieces, those are for the team members and for the coaches. Yeah, they're um, just fun things, I think, to give away. Nice. Yes. Uh, you're getting a lot of thanks um, in the, the Q&A. Um, is it, are you allowed to lift the weight machine from the blue wheel? That's a question. Oh, you know, I should have thought of that. that doggone. I may have to answer that one later, but uh, I, I should have realized that teams were going to try and do that. I don't know off the top of my head. I apologize. Uh, I'll get you an answer if you. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, okay. a lot of these are some, some of these questions are for you. And so I'll, I'll answer whatever questions I get, uh, during the next person and, um, yeah. we'll, we'll do what we can. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you, Joe, so much. Again, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here this afternoon and for Always answering fun. the extra questions. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you.